Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about why maps are useful for understanding crime. And crime is an inherently geographic phenomenon. All crimes happen at places, sometimes they might be virtual places uh, for things like online crime, but even then the offender and the victim are in a particular physical location and understanding that might be important to us. But most crimes happen in physical space and that's what we're going to focus on during this course. Now all types of crime are concentrated in particular places and at particular times. And understanding the relationships between crime and places can be really useful for crime prevention. Now I've said all types of crime are clustered spatially. And we call this sometimes the law of crime concentration. Now, absolute laws are quite rare in social sciences and quite rare in the study of crime. But the law of crime concentration, that most crime happens in a few places, seems to be universal. And it's held in all of the places that we've studied and all of the different crime types and different circumstances that have been studied. So I'll give you an example of that. This is a map of violent crime in England and Wales. And what I've done to produce this map is I've thrown a grid, a net, over England and Wales, and each cell in that grid is one kilometer by one kilometer square. And what I've done is I've counted the violent crimes recorded by police in a particular year in each grid cell, and then I've highlighted uh, in orange the grid cells that contain half of all crime. And you can see that in comparison to the very large number of grid cells in England and Wales, half of crime happens in a very small proportion of those cells. And if we zoom in from England and Wales to London and do the same, count all the violent crimes in each cell and then highlight the cells that contain half of crime, we can see that in London, crime is concentrated in a relatively small number of grid cells. And we can zoom in again to Camden, the London borough where UCL is based, and we can see in Camden too that half of violent crime in this year happened in a relatively small proportion of places. And I've highlighted some of the uh, landmarks in, in Camden on that map. Now this isn't just a phenomenon that holds in England and Wales, it's been studied all around the world and these are some of the places that it's been studied and you can see that although there's some variation, typically about half of crime happens in about 5% of places and these studies use different types of crime, they're measured in different places, lots of different circumstances and we almost always find that relationship and find that 5% of places account for about half of crime. Now crime concentration is important because if you want to explain why crime happens, you need to be able to explain why it happens in particular places and at particular times and not at others. And lots of theories of crime aren't very good at explaining that. Crime concentration is also important for practice because if you want to put in place a crime prevention initiative or deploy some police officers to try to respond to a crime problem, you need to know where that problem is at its worst. And that's particularly important because crime prevention resources, police resources, community resources are often scarce. And so it's particularly important to put those resources where they can do the most good. In this module, we're going to learn how to use maps and other spatial analysis techniques to understand and respond to crime, and crime concentration is a key part of that. 